I'm Dee. I'm Jose. And we're your token theater friends, bringing a POC perspective to the performing arts. In our show, we review three shows at three different price points and tell you which one is most worth your time and money. Today we're going to be talking about Queens by Martina Mayock at Lincoln Center Theater. Hello from the Children of Planet Earth by John Nguyen at the Playwrights Realm. And The Amateurs by Jordan Harrison at Vineyard Theatre Company. In The Amateurs, a troupe of medieval actors in 14th century Europe are trying to escape from the plague by doing a show so good that a duke will take them under his wing and let them live in his realm. However, during rehearsals, secret affairs arise, new roses, and more existential crisis than you can shake a stick at. Mm -hmm. So when the play itself is not their biggest threat. I flat out love this show. Like, I loved it. Like, it mm -hmm. reminded me of so many things that I love, like in Mark Bergman's The Seventh Seal. Mm -hmm. And then I have an, a passion for like, icons and medieval paintings. So it was kind of like looking, you know, like watching like one of these like medieval tableaus come to life. And there's a twist that we're not going to give away, nope. but it turns the play into something else that it was like, it's the most exhilarated, ah, it's the most exhilarated that I've been at the theater in like six months. It, it, it tackled a topic that I think is very relevant right now, which is like the role of art in, in catastrophic times and what, and what does art do does is it supposed to comfort us? Is it supposed to help us to move forward, or is it or, or is it or are we using it as escape, or is it just useless? You know, I I um, but I do have a criticism though. It, I feel like it may there is a certain there's a certain moment in the spoiler section that we will not talk about where he, where they come out and say what the, the what the themes of the play are, which I don't think you needed to do that. I think in the times that we're living in, we can extrapolate. Black Death to Trump. You know, like something that I really loved about this play, that I love about all of Jordan's work, is that he has that ability that I think most writers strive for, which is to mm -hmm. turn the personal into the universal. And the show is about himself and about his fears, but then it becomes something larger than himself. And I think that part of why that twist works so much is because I felt that he was this might make no sense, but I felt like he was like writing the play in front of me. And that just- as in, as yeah. in the moment. It was it, being created in front of you in the moment. Yeah, I was yeah. like, wait, are we like inside Jordan Harrison's brain right now? Is the vineyard theater inside like Jordan's brain? In Hello from the Children of Planet Earth, a commitment phobic engineer who works for NASA hears from his best friend from high school for the first time in like over 17 years. And she has a huge favor to ask. She wants him to be the sperm donor so she and her wife can have a baby. So both friends have voids that they need to fill in their lives. So the big question the play poses is, will this baby be the answer that they're looking for? No, I really loved it because it's kind of like the amateurs where it intersected the big, like existential questions and space and time because you know space travel is a plot point in this play and what i really liked also as a single person is it asked the question of like how how can you be fulfilled when you don't have like the quote unquote normal life that's expected of you which like i'm a sucker for a play that's about awe and this play was mm -hmm. so much in awe of both you know like the miracle of like life. Oh fuck, I sound like the corniest person in the world right now. But about, you know, the miracle of life, but also like the amazing things that human beings can create. Yeah, and not just from, you know, physically create, yeah, but, but like, like from our- Space travel. Yeah. The central conceit of the play, which is a woman asking her friend she hasn't seen in 17 years to, you know, be her sperm donor. I don't, I mean, maybe because I don't, I don't keep in touch with people I don't like, so, I, do, I didn't buy that aspect of it. Yeah, there were like a, there were many elements about the play that asked us to really suspend our disbelief. Mm -hmm. But I was like, <laughs> I was so willing to play along with it that I just mm -hmm. didn't care. I was mm -hmm. like, fun and Cheetos and space travel and babies. Yeah, and, and relationships, all kinds of relationships. Not just babies, but also friendships and you know, making connections because it's just us, there's no one out there. There are no aliens. 
that we know of. That's so sad. <laughs>So Queens is about a group of immigrants living in a basement in Queens. And it's about like the relationships these women form with each other. They're female immigrants. Most of them are from Eastern Europe. And it's, it's about coming to America and assimilating and your reasons for coming to America. Some, some of them are there to, to make a better life, life for themselves and send money back home to where they, they came from. Some of them are fleeing you know, wars and persecution and others of them are just looking for, looking for the people who are missing from their lives. So what I found really moving about this play, especially because you know you and I are both immigrants, though I came here a lot, a lot a far younger age than you did, is it talk uh, is it talks very frankly about the like it, uh, like coming to America like your life there I feel like there is always this perception that oh these, these immigrants come here and then their lives are suddenly going to be easier and it's going to be all roses and stuff like that but. It's not. Immigrating is hard, people who are not immigrants. So I really loved how Martina Mayok, the playwright, put all of those realities out there. And at the end, she didn't romanticize it. She didn't like sanitize it or make pal palatable for you know non-immigrant audiences. Like she just expressed like the realities of it, which are not romantic, even though a lot of movies will tell you it is. The one thing that I didn't appreciate about the show was how long it was. It was almost three hours long, and I feel that many of the scenes felt unnecessary. Like, they mm -hmm. just kept going, 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 going. Like, the first act is so perfect. It's After that perfect first act, I even felt that I didn't need the second no, and third act. No, no. Like, the first I, act was more than enough. I definitely did not need the second act. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> So Jose, which show was the most worth it for you? The Amateurs. Okay. It was, I was, oh, like, I don't even have words. I just love The Amateurs. So Jordan Harrison, you're brilliant. Uh, mine is, the, you, you, might, you might not like this, Queens, because it's $30 and it's a three hour play. So, you know, you get $10 an hour, which is pretty great actually. And, and it's a really good play too. <laughs> And now for our next segment, we changed out of these clothes and we went to Art New York, the uh, new theater complex on the west side of Manhattan to interview Jacqueline Backhouse, playwright, about her new musical, Folk Wandering. describe what the musical is. Uh, the musical itself centers around three uh, three storylines from early 20th century America. So they and they span across um, geographies and timelines. And they and the three storylines all interweave with each other and they are united and uh, sort of, they are united by this sort of ensemble feel of the music. Is your process any different where you're going from writing a play to writing the book for a musical? Like the way that this, the origin story of this started, it's very traditional to my process, uh, which is just like sort of, you know, thinking about a hy hy hypothesis about uh, a story that I want to tell and then um, putting it all on the page um, and continually trying to uh, find delight in what I'm writing and I realized that this play needed more minds on it this this musical and that I and we didn't even know if it was a musical mind that was needed but we me and uh, me and my uh, co-conceiver and director Andrew Nyser we were sort of like you know we think that there's more to this than just you know play play words and text. This is Jacqueline Backhouse, she wrote Men on Boats, a play that has neither men or, nor boats in it. Yes, neither men, <laughs> no boats. During the, during the run of uh, the play at Playwrights Horizons, the remount, we, um, the, there was like, without fail, it was like 24 minutes into the play, there was always like, an older couple would sort of get up and like haughtily walk out. <laughs> this one, Folk Wandering, is about, you know, just, is actually about women in history. And so like, why do you think it's important to like, showcase these stories? I think, well, there's something about this play that has to do with, uh, this musical that has to do with nostalgia and how um, 
you know, especially when how 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 easy it is to get swept up by the idea of someone or the, uh, the the memory of someone, especially someone who we may never have met and who he who we um you know when I when I read histories and uh, and when I read historical biographies, I uh, I get so I am so enamored of those people who I will never know but whose uh, memories are preserved in some way, and so I think that what this play is looking at is. Um, rather than you know these very factual histories like men on boats predominantly did um, and skewing the idea of who you know the pr what predominant history survive i feel like this is actually dealing with that same thing but on an emotional level and actually asking the question of um, how how what we look back on the past what the eyes we look back on the past with and how that that lens is quite skewed so what's today's 11 o'clock number so we got a question from Catherine Weingarten, who asks, what are some common white playwright fails when white writers try to write non-white characters? Ooh. Actually, I have a perfect example from Queens. Oh, no. Yeah, because, you know, one of the characters in Queens is a Honduran woman. I'm from Honduras, in case you didn't know. But the character and the way that the character speaks, the way the character thinks, the way the character moves, it's not Honduran. Like, for instance, we don't say coño. That's like Puerto Rican, Dominican thing. So sometimes white playwrights, for instance, when they're thinking about Latin American characters, they just randomly pick a country, do minimal research, and then do this like amalgam of like what they know of Hispanic people. Yeah, I think, and I think a big fail is like when white playwrights write outside of their experience or race, th th this goes for any marginalized, writing about any marginalized group. I think they tend to think like the, the skin color of the character or the trait of the character, if, if, even if that person has a disability or is on the LGBTQ spectrum, they think that trait defines the character. Like they, and and they write with that as the forefront instead of just making interesting people which is to say when you're and when you're writing about people of color it's like we don't write, talk about our race all the time we don't talk about you know being being poor or any of that all the time sometimes we just like to go to the movies or listen to music and so don't sacrifice good character development for the sake of making it look like you're woke. So that also like makes me wonder, should I be grateful that people from my home country are being represented if they're being represented in a wrong way? No. No? Okay. No. So no, no, no. no hey, that's why I hate Miss Saigon. Just because you give us some breadcrumbs does not mean we get to be great. We need to be grateful. Uh, and on that note, thank you for watching this episode of Token Theater Friends. Please leave us a comment below if you have thoughts or questions or things you want us to plug. In the meantime, we're going to go eat some tacos and listen to some Beyonce. Woo! Bye. Bye. My direction, Jesus. <laughs> Maybe I'll be an outdoor. Yeah. <laughs>